hello everyone my name is jay and i welcome you all for our today's session our session will be uh, today's session will be based on a, a face mask detection in real time this will be uh, first part in our series of tensorflow application so as we all know we are currently facing a deadly as pandemic uh, and in order to prevent us from this uh, wearing face mask is very important so today we'll see how can we design this using transfer learning and various uh, predefined modules in keras and tensorflow uh, i'll be explaining each and every line of code but uh, at the same time all the code and repository and data set will be available on my github account i'll drop the link in description so we'll start with our first session uh, before this i just like to clarify some facts regarding what is trans transfer learning so transfer learning basically stands for we are just uh, transferring pre-trained weights which are previously trained on a bigger network a bigger bigger data set on bigger classifying models and we train it in such a way that we can use it in we, we can use it for our purposes like for classifying something or doing some binary classification so in today's session we are going to see how we can build a face mask detector so we have two classes here one is the person is wearing face mask or it is not wearing or he is or she is not wearing the face mask so today we'll be using inception network uh, which is pre-trained on 1000 classes and more than 80,000 images uh, so from where we are getting this uh, in this type of model who are training this is the major question uh, people ask me while I'm, well, I take live sessions. So there is a competition called as ImageNet, which happens every year, where uh, researchers from all over the world comes with their model, their design model, their design DNNs, CNN models, and they perform some classification task on classifying wide range of uh, objects, like from cell phone to vehicle and persons, everything. So the best optimized model is selected, and uh, it is. We can find that model on uh, if we visit the website, which is uh, ImageNet website. So you can check out the uh, website, and there are various uh, other models which can you you can refer like mobile VNet, and you can have Inception V2 and other models. Uh, selection of model completely depends on you. You have to study what type of classifier classifier they are using on what types of classes it can be used and for today's uh, objective we are going to use uh, inception model so i'll start with the first first session uh, first section will be involving importing library so we'll start with importing uh, import os so first line itself describe how can we import this library import os import os stands for import operating system library why we are using this library is uh, the reason is we are going to uh, use data set which are downloaded and saved in my pc so I'll, i need to access them so in order to do that playing with my operating system data on my operating system i use this library second is uh, most important library first we have to either uh, import uh, import uh, tensorflow then we have to import numpy for working for working with images we also need to import uh, open cv as we want to work on real time mass detection like live video feed to feed live videos so i'll be using cv2 so these are some important libraries as we know keras is an uh, api designed for it is a advanced api so we can use the following line like for importing various uh, models from keras like uh, we can do tensorflow dot keras import layers so what this layer do is we are going to use a sequential model like each layer of the model as uh, i hope you know what the layer means like layer is a combination of perceptron so each layer of the model is somehow connected to the other layer so this type of model is called as a sequential model like every uh, perceptron is somehow connected to the next perceptron or uh, perceptrons in other model so for that we first import layer then as i call the model is sequential so we need to specify which type of model we are going to use for that we are also importing model from keras the next thing is we need to import this uh, we need to import all the pre-trained weights uh, of our uh, transfer learning as we are going to use transfer learning so we need uh, to import all the pre-trained weights so for that 
for the tensorflow dot application has this inbuilt feature from where you can uh, directly import uh, inception model for doing this uh, this line of code uh, is used which says tensorflow dot dot application dot inception v3 import inception v3 if you are using v2 you can replace it with v2 or if you are using mobile net you can also use mobile net you can go and this site of for tensorflow and keras application you can find how to import various models and what are the specific codes for it now uh, as this model uh, is stay in our bigger uh, larger data sets and uh, the images for them has some different inputs in, input size and we will be working with specific input size images for example, uh, today I am going to uh, specify my image with 150 cross 150 comma 3. Here 150 cross 150 is the height and width of the image and 3 specify it is a color image. Like RGB uh, is the formation of image. Okay. So my pre-trained model I will specify and then inception v3. In this my argument will be the first input, input shape. What input shape my model will have. So I specify it as 150 cross 150 cross 3. Second argument is always include top layers. What what does mean like what what it means uh, if we say false top layer include top layer false, which means see I have uh, I have discussed this like uh, this model is trained on thousand different classes and currently we are using this two two classes to predict. So we don't need the last layers of uh, this model. So in order uh, we just uh, neglect this model, uh, last layers of this model, hence we are using false and if you are using, uh, we, you are working on thousand different data, data set classes, you can actually make it true. The next is weight. So by specifying weight, what this model means is if you want to train the weights again, as I have told you, this is a very big model, it's classified thousands of, the model is very big. And again, training the uh, training it, it will take a lot of computation. So we'll not be doing this. We'll go with the previously trained weights. So I'm specifying it as none. If you want to train it, you can uh, just specify get true or one. It will uh, start training the model. Now, uh, as I told you, when you go on this uh, Inception website, you, yeah, we'll be downloading a file. It is a H file, H five file, which will contain all the train weights for that model. I'll show you the file, uh, how the file actually looks. So this is the folder where I've saved the file. Uh, just a second, I just need to find it where the file is. So yes, so as you can see here, I have a H5 file and this is my train with how I've downloaded it. I, I went on the website for the inception model and I just clicked on download. So I got the weights and I have specified in the directories. So now we are in the folder. I'll like to show you what uh, how my data set is. What I have done with my data set is I have splitted them into training and test. So training data set basically uh, contains two uh, classes with mask and without mask. So with mask I have say something I don't know exact number but I have a large data set. So I'll be sharing this data set with you once uh, I'll complete uh, I'll drop the link. And this is the without mask data set. I have downloaded it from Google. So you can find your own data set also and you can train it. So my test data set also has two classes, mask and unmask. So this is the mask image for uh, test, test data set. And this is the no mask image for uh, test data set. So this is my data set. Now we'll move on the code section. So we have uh, this line of code we have discussed like it is loading the weights which has been stored in your location. You can see uh, here the point which you should always remember you should specify R here. If you will not specify R it will uh, generate an error. So in order to avoid this error you should specify R here and you can just copy your uh, 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 folder link and you can paste it here so it will load, load the weights. So I have my weights loaded. Now uh, what I'll do, I'll run a uh, for loop in that pre-trained weights. Like the this 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 object contains all the weights for all all my layer. Like I have told, it is a big network. It has many layers. So each layer has, will have different weights. So so the weights in this model has been divided according to the layers. So I'll what I'll do is I'll iterate a loop in this model layer in this way like I'll, 
start a for loop in the model layer and i'll say i don't want to train the layer again like i don't want to train the model again if you want to train it you can just set it as true but i'll i'll avoid it so this should be capital but i'll avoid it i'll go with the uh, false statement like i don't want to true it. i don't want to retrain it so this is how you load your uh, transfer learning model now the, the next line specify the summary my model summary what this will do is it will print uh, everything like how my model has been designed you can see uh, i'll not run this code i have already run it but you can run it and check it so it specify like what is my input i we have specified it is 150 cross 150 cross 3 so uh, my input input is specified then my second layer is a con layer con 2d so it is using 32 filters different filters and it, it gets resized to 74 by 74 image and then i'm using batch normalization and then again i'm using activation function and then again i'm using uh, second second convolution layer then again batch normalization then again activation function then again convolution this is my flow and at, at the end you can see this 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 is whole model the load model this is this big the model is and last layer actually has 2048 uh, classes so this model is trained for 2048 different types of uh, classification but we will not be using it we just need for two different classifications so i will specify my last layer till which i want this model and after that layer i'll specify my own model okay to do this i'll run this three lines of code we specify i'll specify the last layer for my uh, for this model i'll use mix 7 so mix 7 we can find it here what it will be so this is mix 9 no we will need to go up so this was mixed 8 this is mix 7 okay so it has 7 cross 7 cross 7 8 7 80 7 68 sorry this is our dimension we'll be using this as our last layer and our, uh, up, uh, then after this we'll train uh, we'll import our own model so i'll specify this as my last layer and i'm just printing the output of the last layer so as i we have seen the output will be similar to this let's see what it prints so you can see it's print it is printing this the same i've shown you in the model summary so i have have we have completed our first section how to import uh, transfer learning model and how to specify your last layer so you can specify here as 8 also as you want and you, you should do trial and error to find the best optimized way i have used 7 you can use anything and let me know what the different it what different it makes in the comment section so as i told you we'll be using uh, mix we will be using the state model till mix 7 layer and after that we'll be uh, using our own layers as we uh, so for that I have, for, first what i am doing is i am just flattening the output received from uh, the uh, pre-trained layer or the transfer learning transfer learn model layer i am just flattening it out and then i am then i am feeding it to a, a layer dot dense model uh, which contains 1024 perceptrons uh, and i am using um, my activation function as relu then again i am feeding this to a dropout why we use dropout is uh, in uh, order to overfit if your, your model is overfitting my model was overfitting so that's why i'm using dropout so by uh, specifying 0 0.2 what it means is i'll uh, freeze my 20 percent of uh, perceptrons from getting trained so this is how we can do dropout by using this we can work overcome overfitting after that I, as i told i'll be using two different classes for classification like we have a masked or unmasked people so my last layer will be having uh, two neurons two perceptrons so i specify two and here i'm using softmax as i want a uh, probability uh, in both the classes i don't want as one and zero output so better using binary uh, like you can use sigma also but i'm using softmax this is how my for the layer will look like you can uh, manipulate the things and let me know how it works for you so now i'll fit this whole model to my train model which is a uh, previous pre-trained model i can do this by using this line of code then 
as we know how a tensorflow model actually works what we first do is we pre-process uh, data then what we do is we compile it uh, we define our model then we do compilation and then we do testing we do training and then we do testing so our uh, pre-processing of data is then we have specified our model till here now the we have specified our model here now the next time is we need to compile the model like what we'll do is uh, as we know how a machine learning model or adaptation model work it has two steps forward propagation and backward propagation forward propagation gives us the output for a particular task and backward propagation actually compares the output with the idle and adjust our weights in order to minimize the uh, error so what we need to specify here is first uh, the error character like to check what is the error for this we have various types of loss calculators binary loss uh, binary loss entropy or binary various types of loss you can go and keras etc and see there are list of uh, losses available but here we are using uh, we are doing categorical classification as i am using softmax and will be categorizing uh, two classes based on their probabilities i'll be using uh, binary cross entropy you can use another one also and the second is we need this is so uh, this will specify what type of optima uh, what what type of uh, loss uh, calculator we are using we are using binary cross entropy and the second step is we need to optimize our weights also so that for that we need to uh, import optimizer for importing optimizer, I'll be using RMS prop. Here, LR means learning rate. What my learning rate I'm using is 0.001. You can change it and test it and let me know what the uh, difference is. You can also use Adam here. But uh, as I'm doing categorical classification, uh, RMS prop is uh, more trustworthy. Adam will also work good. Uh, also, we are specifying accuracy metrics here. Like it will predict what the accuracy is. So this is how we'll define our model compiled function. Then the next step is, uh, as I told you, data uh, pre-processing is very important. Now we'll start with data pre-processing. Actually, uh, idle practice it. You, you should first start with data pre-processing and then do all this thing. But uh, I always prefer doing it a bit later. So I'll start with data pre-processing. For this, I'll be using CV2 library and OS. CV2 library is basically to load the image and uh, into a matrix format and then converting into a numpy array like a computer always understand the images as a number uh, matrix of numbers uh, so in order to convert this we'll be using cv2 there are various type of other libraries you can use like you can, you can use pillow uh, you can even use imutils uh, or various type of other libraries but i always prefer to use open cv and the second as i have already imported this file above but i just need to show you how you can do it in combined form you can also run this code for importing then the next step step is I'll, i need to uh, load my training data so i'll specify a data path where i'll specify where my training data is stored this is my uh, link for loading my training data you can change it according to where you have stored your data then what i am doing is i am uh, listing down uh, different how many category do have i have in this screening uh, data path like my training data set contains two categories it is mask and unmask i will run a for loop for them to in order to label them what i am going to do is here i am going to use categorical classifier like i label mask as zero and unmask as one so now the question is this is the binary classification then why we are saying it is a categorical classification the twist is here i am just going to uh, label them as a category like what i mean by category is zero will be uh, represented in form of uh, a matrix which contains uh, two columns and one row if the first co first column and first two element is one we specify that it is a mask image and if the second one is one it specify unmask image I, you can see this uh, this will be the form of matrices if this location is one so that your image is mask one and if this location is one it will mean your image is unmasked or without mask so for doing this i'll what i'll do is i'll run a for loop in my categories as i have told you i have two categories this will list my categories I have two categories which are mask and unmask. This will what will it will do is it will uh, label mask at zero and unmask as one. 
so this is these these two lines of code will label it in the same similar way now i just printed it what my category is what my label dictionary is as i told you with mask will be labeled as zero without mask will be labeled as one so this will this is uh, predicting it the second is it will uh, i'm predicting what different categories i have as, as i told i have two categories with mask and without mask i have so, shown you in the starting only my data how my data set is divided and then how i have labeled it zero for mask without with mask and one for uh, without mask now this is how our data set is data set is designed and loaded it is not yet loaded we have just specified we have labeled our data set now the uh, task come where we need to load the data set i have created two list here uh, data will be storing all the uh, converted numpy array converted uh, values of each and every image present in the data set and target will be con uh, storing the categorical label labels of each and every images okay so what i'll do is i'll first run a for loop in categories i have two categories uh, os dot join part will join my data part with this categories so categories basically contains with mask and without mask so and i'm listing the down the uh, images in each category like image name will have all the images which are present in mask and unmask now what i'll do is i'll run a for loop in this each and every folder like for the first category for mask this this will run and save the image in img object which i have created then what we'll do we'll resize it uh, by using cv to dot resize function here my first argument is the image which we need to resize second is to what size you want to resize so i have specify image size as 150 cross 150 so this will resize it to 150 cross 150 then what i'll do is i'll append this uh, data to my list which is data list so i'll use this uh, specific command to load uh, append the data to data list and at the same time we also need to append the labels for it so i'll use target dot append this uh, this line to append uh, labels for a specific image to the target list so here i'm using inception loop the reason why i'm using this inception loop is uh, as uh, we don't want any uh, issue due to image uh, is not proper so if if there is an uh, exception with some image like image is smaller or a bigger it, this will give us an uh, exception if you don't want to do it you can directly run your code till here but uh, i always prefer to do this so the next step is uh, we uh, now we have the image uh, in resize format now we need to convert this image into a numpy array to do this i will i will import import numpy as np i will supply my data and convert it into a numpy array now data is converted into numpy array i'll normalize it by dividing it by 255 so it will be in, data will be in range of 0 to 1 now again we have to resize all our things into a matrix format so the first uh, the first argument here specify how much long your data is so data specially contains the number of images do you have so this will specify how many numbers do you have then data dot shape 0 will specify as i told the number of uh, images i have then uh, image size will be what corresponding size you are planning to work on which, which will be 150 cross 150 in our case 3 will be as we are working with color and then uh, similar for we have to convert our uh, target labels also in a numpy array so i will uh, supplying my target as a argument for numpy conversion now as i told i am going to use a different types of uh, labeling here like i am going to label it as a categorical cross entropy to do this uh, keras actually has an inbuilt function called as keras.util and you can use np.util uh, to convert a normal label to a categorical label by uh, doing running this line of code your label will be converted into a categorical label now uh, as i told i have I have a data set which is properly separated like with mask and without mask now if we run the data set uh, like this only it will uh, show 100% accuracy or it will start overfitting so get the best result we need to uh, actually shuffle the data we should mix every everything and then run uh, then I, we should train our model so in order to shuffle our data we will be using 
scikit-learn.util input shuffle and we'll shuffle our data and label as well and we'll save them in our train data set so if i'll say train data set 0 it will have my data values train data set as 1 it will have my label for corresponding data values so uh, till now we have uh, done our pre-processing data pre-processing we have imported our transfer learning models and also we have specified uh, how our model is going to work we have also specified what type of optimizer or what type of uh, error corrector or loss function we are going to use now our, the main objective of our code starts like we need to train our model now so for that we generally use model.fit uh, here first we uh, first argument which we need to supply is the data as i told you my data is uh, here means if i do train say 0 it will print my data set I will show you what how how data data will look like sorry okay present what was the spelling mistake present train model okay so for that we need to actually uh, load this first I haven't run this code so I'll load it it will take a bit time like it need to work on a lot of data set so uh, I'll run this code now so it will take a bit time like the data set is big and it will take time to convert into a numpy array so we'll see how it works so here you can see the random state equals to 2 which what this, what this mean is no two like we have a specific arrangement here like so there will be a situation like no two similar image should come together my similar image what i mean is you could consider the previous state of images how they are arranged suppose i have a image of suppose say me wearing a mask and my friend wearing a mask we are together in the format now these models will uh, make sure that we we won't come together in the shuffle data set as well like there should be at least separation of two images between us two so i hope this is clear so it will take a bit time i'll fast forward it for you so it is showing showing some errors like i used drain here so it is drain sorry i'll rerun it and we have to wait again so i'll fast forward it for you okay as you can see uh, our data has been plotted here so you can see it is in range of 0 and 1 e specify like it is between 0 and 1 is less than 1 and a bit towards 0 so this will be around 0 0.00009 or something like that so this is the number of data we have our data starts from here and ends here for specific image so you can see this this is how our data actually looks so you can uh, actually run it for one also and see how the label looks and we'll see it is totally shuffled one now we'll move to a further point like we'll start training here as i discussed the first point is our data second point is our label second argument is our label and third is how many epochs you are going to train it on so by 10 epochs I, what i mean is i train each and every uh, image 10 times I'll, pass each and every image to the model uh, to the model 10 times so after running this uh, you can see uh, I'll run this code so I'll, I'll, as I run the code you can see this is how it training starts it will take a bit time like uh, it, it works on a larger data set it, it, may, it may take around 10 to 15 minutes uh, depends on how your system is so dependingly uh, it took around 5 minutes for me to train this like I am using i5 uh, 8 generation with a heavy graphic card so it depends on your computer configuration how it takes so you can see in my first epoch this is the amount of data i have this is my training image data set it is of, of 1376 images so it is training 10 times on each image so this specify my loss as 0 0.257 for my first epoch and accuracy 90 percent around uh, almost 90 percent 
you can see my loss is continuously decreasing and my accuracy is increasing uh, achieving a 99 percent accuracy is a big deal for us so this is how a transfer learning model is trained now we'll move so whenever you want to load your model or you need to save to you will not uh, you need to run your model again you need it should not do like this you have to run each and every code again and do everything again so in order to we will what we'll do is we'll save some of our epoch like some of our weight values so that we can recall it and run our model again to do this uh, we use this following line of code you can go through it it is nothing just i specify where i want to save my checkpoint so this is my checkpoint saving repository and just stuff like that and where i'm going to my save what uh, which epoch uh, weight values i want to save i'm saving the 10th epoch value like i have the maximum accuracy there so i'll be saving it its uh, weights values uh, at this location which is uh, in face my detector so we can uh, it depends on uh, you how and to save your model so these two blocks are basically for saving your models then we'll uh, now we have seen how it works with training data now the major task is how it performs with test data so i have created a easier way for you guys to actually uh, study the variation we'll use similar method for uh, loading data set which we use for training data but what we'll do is we'll load the training data in place of uh, sorry we'll load the testing data in place of training data so it is similar to the above you just need to follow the above step which i have mentioned above and do what uh, each and every step which is done above and just i just copy pasted above code here for testing data just the thing what which di is different i am supplying testing data here in place of training data sorry for this uh, so i am specifying testing data in place of training data so everything will be same as above i will convert the label for uh, cross entropy also so after doing this uh, you will get the same image like the error is show showing like i'm not running each and every line of code you have to run every line so this error will not appear so though now the next step is uh, so just avoid this line of code i'll explain why i'm using th uh, this line of code here so i will just remove this i need to test how my model is performing on test data set like for uh, training data we use model dot fit method for testing data we'll use model dot evaluate method here what we do is similar to the above we specify first of our first argument as data second as label of data here we don't specify epoch like we are not going to train it after running this like if i i run this i hope i'll i'll run this code so we have to wait a bit so uh, i'll discuss here first uh, why i'm using this line of code here so as i told you uh, whenever you start your program again uh, you should not at all but it always run the training model first and then do everything else so as i'm uh, using this model again i'm not uh, working on this first time so i don't want to train it again and waste our time so what i have done is i have saved the weights and uh, i'll just load that weight when i load the weight we'll see how the accuracy actually varies so it is giving some error checkpoint directly because i am i haven't run the above code so i'll run the above code here first then this code so uh, just wait for a few seconds like it will take a bit time so uh, a code has uh, run uh, the compiler has run the code now we will again uh, load this code so we will run this code again and see what happens so we will wait for something i will just fast forward this session for you so you didn't uh, you won't have to wait so 
so as you can see it has started uh, testing our data and our accuracy is at the start is it is very bad it is around 22 percent so let's see how much it varies so it started increasing So at the end we are getting around 60% accuracy which is not that good but as I told you I have run this model previously and I am loading the previous weight which we are trained on different thing but when you run this code uh, on your system you will see your accuracy is uh, more than this it will go around 70% or 78% so uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce you, you with the uh, structure of the modeling so that's why I am not going deep with the training Part, like I'm not going to train it here so we'll move on to the further like we'll try it on live video feed how it performs on live video feed for that we'll be using uh, obviously open CV uh, so what I'll do is I'll first of all uh, if you're working on live video feed like you're working with your webcam feed what you need to do is you need to specify uh, cv2 dot video capture as zero. By zero, what do you mean? You are using zero index of your camera. Zero index is uh, your webcam is uh, attached to. If you are using uh, external webcam or external cameras, so you need to specify here one. If you are using one camera, if it is two, you need to specify two, etc. So before going that, I have missed this part. What is this? So in whole human the part of interest which we are interested in is the face so it will be easier for us to uh, run our model if we are able to detect face first and then we'll pass the face image we'll crop the image of the face and just fit that image to our model to predict if the face is wearing mask or not so for that i'm using hard cascade classifier to detect faces so for this you need to run this code before this you need to download this hard cascade xml file from uh, you can go on open cv uh, document documentation and see how to download this and you have to store it uh, where your jupyter is running so i have stored in i have stored this file in similar location where my jupyter uh, currently is running so these are the two lines we specify now in order to fit the video files like a video can be of any scale it can be of 480 720 we need to convert it to a fixed fixed set to do this uh, we run this code source.set by source.set what we do is we set our image into a specific format or a specific length and breadth or a specific uh, pixel what we see so here specifying one which means it is specifying width of the video and two which means it is specifying height of the video so I am specifying it as 320 by 480 and I am also the declaring label dictionary as 0 is for mask and 1 is for uh, no mask and I am uh, specifying their color here it will be say green and this will be red like for no mask it will be red and for mask it could be green if a green uh, square uh, arrives around your face which means you are wearing mask and if red around which, which means you are not wearing a mask okay so then i'll uh, run a for loop uh, sorry i'll run a loop by specifying while true where i'll what i'll do is i'll convert each and every uh, video into a frame like what i mean is i'll convert a video into smaller uh, frames okay so how this video will work it will work uh, as we can uh, we move, uh, we move uh, image continuously, so it will work as an image. So similarly, we can do the vice versa and we convert a video into an image. So we are converting a video into an image file and we are reading it by this. Here, this rect means if this is actually happening, if we are getting any source, we are getting any feed from our webcam, this will be true or it will be false. It is a Boolean classifier and the data will be stored in this image now we need to run our class, uh, cascade classifier which we have specified up so we'll do this uh, face dot classify detect multi scale and we'll specify image here this uh, 1.4 and 5 specify at what grid you want to uh, uh, run your hardcore classifier you can change it and see how it varies 
so now uh, this faces is nothing but a tuple uh, tuple what a tuple is it is similar to a list but here we cannot replace the uh, values in it so it will be a tuple uh, 1 comma 4 if we have only one face in the uh, in the frame and if you have more than one face it will be 2 comma 4 we specify it is 2 it will be 3 comma 4 if we specify uh, if there are 3 percent uh, in the frame so here uh, 3 will specify a number of uh, person standing in the frame and the four specify it is it is having four different values for uh, the coordinates to be built like for the coordinates of the rectangle it will have the four coordinates of the rectangle st uh, saved here uh, in faces so i'll run a for loop uh, in this faces and i'll retrieve each and every value uh, from this in x y w h where x y is the uh, location of the midpoint of that uh, rectangle, uh, rectangle or the square which we are forming on the face and w and h are the width and height of the rectangle now this line of code is doing nothing but it is just cropping that uh, face image and as i told you it will be easier for us to detect mass and unmasked people if we just feed them the face image rather feeding them whole image so rather making the model confused so in order to do this we are just cropping it by uh, using this uh, line of code we are actually cropping the image then this this is nothing but i was just trying to do some uh, update so i uh, will not consider it then what i'll do is i resize my uh, this cropped image to a specific 150 comma 150 image as we need to uh, feed this to our model so this line will do resizing then i'll draw, normalize the image then I again resize it and convert into a numpy array by running this code and then I'll uh, just load the image to my model so for loading the image in our model we use model.predict function here I am specifying reshape which is the last operation performed on image and we are uh, just passing this to our model now after this uh, what we are also doing is uh, we need to predict, uh, predict what is it is labeled or any un, uh, sorry it is mask or unmasked image so for a masked image what we are going to get is a matrix of uh, two column and one row if and for mask it will be second uh, second uh, row will have value one so what we will do we will find the maximum of uh, maximum in the two rows if it is the second row which has a maximum value uh, sorry second column which has maximum value it will be a no mask image and one if the first column has the maximum value it will be a mask image so to do this we'll run this code we'll get the maximum argument and by specifying axis one it will specify the column if you do it zero it will specify row it will do find the maximum in the row but we need to uh, find the maximum in column so we'll be specifying axis as one so after that uh, we need to draw a rectangle around the image for drawing rectangle we'll be using cb2 rectangle we'll pass image as an object we specify the midpoint uh, where we need to spec uh, for midpoint of the rectangle which will be x comma y as i told you x comma y is the midpoint of the uh, face detected and x plus w will be the width of the rectangle y plus w will be the height of the rectangle we will also specify the color dictionary and we will specify according to, according to label you can refer this above so color will be uh, if it is mask and if it will be red if it is uh, unmasked image so by running this code uh, we actually we can actually uh, uh, draw a rectangle around it now we also want to put a uh, text there like if it is a mask then put mask and if it is unmasked put unmasked to do this we will uh, use cb.put text as I have uh, done here you can just go through this code and here cb2.font uh, we can also edit the font which we need to use so I am using font as hardly simple you can use anything else I am using width as 0.8 you can use 1 or whatever you want this are this uh, you can refer cb2 uh, documentation to actually understand each and every argument which we need to pass here and how it works last but not least we'll be displaying it uh, as i am show i'll use i am show function to display whatever i am i'm seeing like model is saying 
and I'll also specify a wait key like if you want to decontinue the operation you should uh, press escape button so escape has an ASCII value 27 you can check uh, the various ASCII value of various key and you can specify whichever key you want and then we'll destroy all the windows which are created and we release the source okay so this is the code which we need to run I'll show you how it looks so this will take a bit time so source is not defined as I have run this code above so when I'll run this code, it will take a bit time. So we'll wait. I'll fast forward it for you. So as you can see, a file is generated here. Life. And if we do this, sorry for the. Uh, as you can see, I'm not wearing the mask, so it is predicting no mask. And if I'll wear a mask, it will start predicting as mask. So, uh, I don't have a mask right now here, so I'll find a mask and I'll upload it. Thank you. So, this was it. Uh, please mention in the comment section how was the tutorial. And if you have any doubt, you can contact me through uh, through the chat box or I'll be dropping my GitHub link there. You can post any issue over there. I'll try to rebond as fast as I can. So, thank you for attending this. Thank you.